Jennifer Peters. Welcome to another episode in the Criminal Calendar. I have long wanted to um, invite our author to come visit us in Scottsdale. Welcome Susan Isaacs. Glad to be here. And this is a great year for it in the sense that Susan is the incoming president, or actually you have been for several months, yeah. of the Mystery Writers of America. Right. Is that just a um, figurehead job? Pretty much. Oh, rats. Pretty much. <laughs> I mean, you have to go to the Edgar Awards once to say, hi, I'm your president, and the next year to say, goodbye, it's been lovely. But that's pretty much the responsibility. What is the Mystery Writers of America? What, you know, it's a, it's a writer's organization. It's, it's an organization of, of writers. It, it could be writers of mysteries, writers about the genre. Um, but essentially, it's to uplift the, you know, mysteries in, in terms of public awareness and, you know, they should be taken seriously, they should be reviewed, so anything they can do. I'm amazed that you've escaped it so long since it's a New York-based organization. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was on the board for years. Were you? Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize that. Um, has there been, um, do I remember there was some controversy among the members for a while as to what an organization like that ought to be doing? Yes. They're, they're, I mean, they love to fight, MWA. Um, and there was a, a major coup um, of a whole group uh, who said that it was too New York-based and too elitist who wanted to open it up some more. So the, uh, there was this coup. The elitists, alleged elitists, were thrown out. And now this new group is in. And, I mean, they do a nice job, but they still fight. You know, it's just endemic. I mean, you, you, need, you need some sort of, um, you know, boom, bam going on. I mean, that's, I think, why, why one of the reasons we're attracted to the mystery in the first place. We love, conflict, you know, conflict, brouhaha, you know, whatever. I yeah. find it interesting that, I mean, I think the MWA is a little more professionally geared because the British Crime Writers Association really likes to think of itself as a social gathering only, you know, right. more of a... Well, th this is, and I mean, it, 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 they, they have wonderful publications and they really, really do a lot of good. Um, but in the, in the process, they, they fight. Well, this uh, has been yeah. a, um, due to the events of September. Right. 2001. This has been a, a time when, we, even if people felt somewhat alienated from New York, I think that we've all rallied around and seen New York differently. Yeah. You know, it's, it's made an amazing difference to us. Um, right from the beginning, the outpouring of, of warmth and, and indeed kindness of people jumping into their cars in Chicago and Arizona and California and coming to New York to help. You know, f besides the firefighters and the rescue workers, I mean, people who just said, what can I do? Can I pass a bucket? Can I bake cookies? Um, and the, the f New York, as a general rule, has not felt beloved by the rest of America. And um, why that should be, I don't know. Um, but it's, it's very nice that after the, the, um, the terrorist attack that, um, that we really pulled together and it's 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 good for us to know that the rest of the country is with us. Well, I think I think there's, you know, not only enormous horror and fear yeah. but you know enormous empathy and certainly for anyone engaged in professional writing, New York is really the nexus of where that happens. Most publishing companies, you know, right. the larger ones sure. are located in New York. There's uh, an enormous percentage of professional writers mm -hmm. who live in and around New right. York. You don't actually live in Manhattan. Well, You're I have an apartment there, but I live on Long Island. I mean, I'm, I'm really this converted Brooklynite who became, you know, Farmer Isaacs, you know, raising tomatoes <laughs> and, and what have you. So I really like living in the suburbs. Well, and 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 didn't didn't want you know after our kids grew up and and both dogs may they rest in peace you know left us I still didn't want to move. Uh, well, I think I think it maybe it certainly made me realize that you know how how vulnerable all of us are. But more than that, in the writing community, what an incredible loss New York you know would be. I oh. Mean, uh, absolutely, but I mean, it's, it's an attack on, on any, I mean, had it been on Phoenix, had it been on L.A., it, I think it would have been the same. It was, it was really meant to be an attack 
on us all. Oh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not arguing that. All I meant was yeah. because the writing community is so central mm -hmm. to New York. Yeah. I mean, Tulsa was a perfectly hideous thing, but it wasn't about the writing community. It was about other things. Right. right. And well, you have um, you have come to us at a time when a, a books written in and around New York certainly yeah. gain added meaning. I wanted to mention just before we we talk about your own work. Um, the work of an author, a friend of yours, and a friend right. of mine, Linda Fierstein, who would have been with us today, but yeah. um, her job as an assistant district attorney in New York has uh, has kept her in Manhattan. It's a book called *The Dead House*, and uh, it is really about the history of New York. Figures into the plot. Uh, the the contemporary murder takes place up on the Columbia campus. Mm -hmm. And the roots of the of the plot, as it all turned out, lie out in the East River on Blackwell's Island, where there is a rune that Linda mm -hmm. has always been taken with. I've not seen it, so I wanted to ask you if it's something that was familiar to you. Yes. And it was seen. the smallpox hospital. That's right. That's right. Which was, uh, I gather, where in the 19th century, sure. when the plague struck New mm -hmm. York with um, disastrous. They, they try to get them there as, as soon as possible. Yeah, it was, it was a nightmare. But she's wonderful. She's done that in past books, which is incorporate a sense of old New York, bringing it up in, in, into the new. I think uh, it, it, you know, there's a lot of relevance in the sense that uh, while we mourn this period of death and destruction, that it's not unique. New York has, mm -hmm. in fact, all cities, you know, have mm -hmm. have endured earlier periods and and have survived. So right. I found her book, uh, in many ways, you know, a, a, a kind of hopeful reminder. That um, that it's possible to rebuild mm -hmm. and 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 move forward, and, and I'm sure that the smallpox plague was regarded in many ways, you know, with the same sure. fright and and mm -hmm. horror and so forth that we've experienced very recently. Yeah. yeah. Have you been to visit Blackwell's Island? No, never. I thought after reading yeah. this, such is like the power the, of the writer. I know. That's <laughs> that, right. That, that I would like to, to go. go out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, very much and visit it because I think what attracted Linda, if I'm not mistaken, was uh, the architecture of the building. Mm -hmm. That although it was a place that was in fact the, the dead house, mm -hmm. um, she thinks it's one of the most beautiful architectural. I mean, yeah, she's so amazing. Um, besides being a good writer, besides being a, a lawyer, a prosecutor of, of national renown, um, she has a great eye. I mean, she's, she has, she loves art, she loves ballet, she loves architecture. She's really an incredible human being. I so. think so, too. And to me, mm -hmm. she exemplifies the best parts of New York, you Absolutely. know. I mean, you can, yeah. you can occasionally, what did I write not recently, something about, you know, social interaction in New York is often just hostilities. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but with Linda, yeah. I think I think you do get this. So I'm I'm sorry she's not here today, but fortunately you are. <laughs> um, talk to me a little bit about what made you a writer. Where where what's your background? My background is um, I grew up not not knowing that I should have a vocation because I was a '50s kid, and you know I assumed that one got married and had children, and that was it, and you know grew several chins, and, and, then, and that was the end of it. So, um, except when I was in college, I began to write for the paper. And I had great fun with it. And I got out of college not knowing what to do, because since nobody had asked me to marry them, so I had to do something, right? Oi. So, <laughs> oi, that's right. So, <laughs> as my family said collectively, um, so I uh, took a test an aptitude test for computer programming, and I flunked. And they said, well, all we have is a job at Seventeen Magazine. So I said, OK. And I went there. I started as reader mail, writing advice to the lovelorn. And as Were Abigail Were you an Wood, agony aunt? Yes, I was an agony aunt, and, and doing book reviews. And finally got to be a senior editor there, at which point I was married. Um, I was. Uh, about to have a baby, I really could not fit into the subway by my eighth month. I couldn't, during rush hour, it was impossible. 